So hello everyone and welcome to the Scientix webinar titled The Importance of 21st Skills and Industry 4.0 in STEM Education. My name is Marina Jimenez and I will moderate this session. With us today we have Dr. Sahin Idin. Sahin is a STEM educator who received his PhD in Science Education from the Hatshepsut University. Aside from that, he's been a Scientix ambassador for Turkey since 2016. He has written a number of articles and book chapters and has conducted many national and international workshops related to STEM education. He is the editor-in-chief of an international journal entitled Journal of STEAM Education, which, as its title says, uh, focuses on STEAM education and its fields. His current studies focus on integrated STEM education, 21st uh, century skills in STEM education and the relationship between STEM education and Industry 4.0. In this webinar, the current situation of STEM education and the Industry 4.0 in Europe will be discussed. In particular, 21st century skills and their importance for the mentioned areas will be emphasized. Participants will learn about the relationship between STEM and the, this industry through real uh, STEM exams. Also, a number of recommendations will be given to participants in order to overcome challenges they might face in their STEM courses. My colleague Noel, which is here with the Scientix account, will be helping you with any technical problems you may have. So if you have them, please write to her privately if you're experiencing any difficulties. Also, please remember to turn down your cameras and your microphones. At the end of the session, we will have 15 minutes in which you will be able to address questions to our expert through the chat but you can still pause them during the whole webinar. Also, if you want to receive a certificate, you'll have to fill in our feedback survey, we will, which we will share in the chat at the end of the session, so stay tuned. And that's all from me. I will leave the floor to Sahin, and I hope you enjoy. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, Marina, thank you so much for introducing me. I'm going to mention today about the importance of 21st century skills and industry 4.0 in STEM education. Uh, it will take about 45 uh, minutes. So, uh, can you hear me? Okay. Okay. Now we can start with some introducing about STEM education. Uh, Noel, can you can you change the uh, slide, please? Okay. Uh, our content is STEM education, 21st century skills, and industry 4.0. We will start by investigating by saying something about STEM education. So, STEM education. It's known that the change in science and technology and engineering have been increasing in recent years. We understand this change by looking at both scientific studies and inventions, new technological tools uh, and machines and new methods which have been used in the engineering fields. From this point of view, it is able to, to be claimed that education systems are changed to be adopted to give change uh, which have been seen in industry as well. So uh, STEM education actually can be identified as one of the new approaches to be used in education system which also aims students to be able to solve problems in their daily lives. It aims if any student uh, faces any problem in their uh, in uh, his or her daily life, they can be able to solve the problems they face. So, National Research Council states STEM is an education and teaching approach which integrates the content and skills of science, technology, engineering, and math. And also, another uh, research states that STEM is being created by using capital letters of science, technology, engineering, and math. Uh, now, we can see uh, a graphic. Uh, I think it is not so clear, but uh, I'm going to mention about it. From 2000, and to, from 2000 to 2020, uh, there is a there is a study conducted by OECD 2015. It is about how is the talent pool distributed by field of education. It states this the distribution of tertiary education graduates by field has not changed much from 2005 to 2012. Humanities, uh, social sciences, law, and education still represent a greater share than science, technology, engineering, and mathematics in OECD and. G20 countries. 
So some countries are more successful than others in having a balanced distribution of fields of education in their talent pool. I'm gonna give some example about the statements, statements uh, in some of my slides. So China had 40% of STEM graduates and 45% of humanities, social sciences, law and education graduates in 2012. While for India the figures were 35% and uh, 53 uh, respectively so what is going to be told about 21st century skills every people say something about STEM education and besides this 21st century skills they are so popular but when we focus on 21st century skills the partnership for 21st century skills uh, defines that those mentioned skills collaborating communication critical thinking and creativity Another point given by National Research Council states that 21st century skills non routine problem solving, self development, systematic thinking, adaptability, and complex communication skills. Uh, and besides them, uh, it can be told that innovation, employability, and efficient team working can also be given as 21st century skills. So, the 21st skills are paid attention, which were which were able to understand it by Obama's statements regarding the United States force towards STEM education. It is clearly understood that 21st century workforce needs people who are donated with 21st century skills because uh, we know that the business world needs those skills. Gonzalez, Jones, and Ruiz also revealed the importance of STEM education as features related to the industry. In their opinion, completion of the 21st century decade launched a global competitiveness phase in economical markets, which had initiated an instructional paradigm shift for learning and teaching. This statement is so important to understand 21st century skills and industry 4.0. So, what is going to be talked about in industry 4.0? Uh, we are able to see a graphic uh, and also there are four different uh, industrial uh, revelation. In the first revelation, uh, we are looking by introducing of mechanization of manufacturing with water and stem water. Then when, when we come to uh, 19th century, we see that second industrial revolution had uh, started by introduction of division of labor and mass production with the help of electrification. Then, beginning of the 1970s, I mean third industrial revolution by operation of electronics and IT for automation of production. And today, in the 21st century, we are mentioning about fourth industrial revolution. The other name of that is smart uh, industry on the basis of cyber physical systems. So, as it can be seen by looking at figure 1, a first industrial revelation initiated by using steam water in the industry and the recruitment energy was provided by manufacturing with water and stem power. As we know, and when entering the 19th century, as I mentioned, the second industrial revolution started by using electrification in the industry. And after all, today we are mentioning about smart university, smart technology, and also technology and its applications which are used in industrial fields have been changing in time, it's so normal as we know. So there are some important statements we understand from Prof's investigation, it describes old industrial revelation processes. It states that first industrial revelation was driven by the advent of steam engines being used in power production facilities. and then we look and focus on second industrial revolution was driven by the assembly line, example by Henry Ford a century ago. And third industrial revolution, which occurred in the 1970s, was driven by the use of computers in production, for instance, the use of CNC machines. It is so uh, famous and so much used. Computer processing of quality and logistic information were transformed during the third industrial revolution. What well, this point that describes industry 4.0 uh, is a paradigm shift in manufacturing technology. So, another important point given by European Parliament, and it states that industry 4.0 uh, was initially coined by the German government 
we know that German government investigated industry industry 4.0 and it uh, paid for for it within the search 75 billion euro. So Stock and Seliger presents an overview of different opportunities for sustainable manufacturing in the scope of industry 4.0. So, uh, okay. So, Germany tried to invest 2017 to conduct a study that states that Industry 4.0 or Smart Industry. It is well known by Basil's work, refers to the technological evolution from embedded systems to cyber physical systems. It also represents the coming forward industrial revelation on the way to an internet of things data on services. So European Parliament states that Industry 4.0 has main features. These are interoperability, virtualization, decentralization, real-time capability, service orientation and modularity. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you a figure uh, given by Tusiat, a kind of institution of Turkish business world. The elements of Industry 4.0 are the cool clouds, additive manufacturing, augmented reality. We also know that uh, augmented reality has too many applications, which are used in science courses, in mathematics courses, in other uh, different courses, big data and analytics, autonomous robots. Simulation, horizontal vertical system, integration, the industrial internet of things, and cyber security. Industry 4.0 has nine advanced technological products. It is given by Tusiat and also, and already some of them have been using in manufacturing, as I have mentioned in my uh, previous slides. So, another, in another study conducted by Rushman, and it uh, stated that. Industry 4.0, those given technologies transform production, is a laid, fully integrated, automated, and optimized production inflow, changing traditional production relationships among producers and customers and suppliers between human and nation. Another important problem we face now, uh, I'm gonna also uh, mention in my uh, other slides about the statements. So, there is a very important, so important uh, statement we have in Russia 4.0 is not just about manufacturing because although the term in Russia 4.0 and the defense architect model behind it originate from the Germany, it is clear that the reason and reality of the fault in industrial revolution has caught the attention of uh, organizations across the globe as well explored at the end of this uh, article. Moreover, in the last year 4.0 is not just about manufacturing anymore, so you are able to see the results. So, there is a nice uh, picture we have in the last year 4.0. As I have mentioned, we have nine tools within the last year 4.0. And the first is big data and analytics, and second, uh, augmented reality, additive manufacturing, uh, for example, like 3D printing. And cloud, cloud technologies, cyber security, industrial internet, and horizontal vertical software integration, simulation, and the last one is autonomous robots. There are some criticized within autonomous robots we see from the uh, scientific uh, articles within ethical issues. Also, we know that the elements of Industry 4.0 are the cloud, added manufacturing, augmented reality, big data and analytics, autonomous robots, as I mentioned, those mentioned uh, tools. So, the European Commission states in its study conducted in 2016, vocation and training the species for feeding job speak and uh, transversal skills, escalating the translation to employment. And maintaining and updating the skills of the workers that is so important point given by European Commission within uh, the future of a job specific. So, World Economic Forum states that several countries in the Middle East and North Africa region have also been investing in technical and vocational education, and 
training, notably Egypt and Turkey, although this particular form of form of education remains underused across the region. There can be seen some studies related to Turkey's current situation on its education system and works workers. I think uh, most of you know about the PISA and teams that are two important international examinations, which are uh, which are uh, measured which are uh, measured students' science and mathematics and reading skills. Uh, we also know that Turkey's location is not expected level uh, among 72 countries. Turkish students located about 52 degree and also Turkish Industry and Business Association estimated that growth high school rallies in this context the need for labor employed in industry will increase and also this labor force will be more secure so STEM education and industry have been paid attention to provide people having 21st century skills because if any, if any of us face any problem in our daily life we have to solve our problems if we want to donate our students with 21st century skills as I mentioned about creativity, uh, employability and also efficient problem solving and efficient uh, and complex communication and so on. So here uh, you will see uh, how many studies have been prepared within the webinar issues uh, till now, uh, I investigated 25 PhD dissertation for preparing this webinar, 191 articles related to STEM education, and 16 articles related to Industry 4.0, and also five articles STEM about related both STEM education and Industry 4.0, and we have some reports related to STEM education nine. Eight of come from uh, related to Industry 4.0, and two reports come from STEM education and Industry 4.0. So we have three books which are related to STEM education, and one book we have related to Industry 4.0. Totally, we have uh, 260 uh, resources to prepare for this webinar. Now, there is a very important uh, indicate that we have it states out that share of workforce in science and technology and also in generic according to 2008 uh, this study conducted by OECD you are able to see that Luxembourg located on the top of the list within science and technology and engineering and then another comes and then Belgium and also Austra Australia so when we look so I am from uh, Turkey as well. Unfortunately, Turkey is located at the end of uh, at the end of the uh, list. Uh, on on the Turkey we see in the Portugal and Korea, Austria and Slovak Republic. Some countries come from European Union, uh, but other countries come from uh, any uh, countries from the world. But I have to highlight that under the EU 27 countries, we see some European Union countries as France, Norway, Spain, Czech Republic, uh, Italy, Slovak Republic, Austria, and Portugal, and also Turkey's candidate. These results is not nice for European uh, Union countries. So the share of workers was investigated in a study carried out by OECD, as I mentioned about it, it presents us to understand the share of the workers in science and technology occupations among 30 countries and this result also is seen that is suitable within Turkey students PISA 2015 scores in science and math so Kibitak, the scientific and technological research council of Turkey is one of the guides which has launched many calls published studies and support both and public and private national institutions within the scope of STEM education and industry 4.0 Kubitak reveals that there have been carrying out some workings within Industry 4.0, but which we can understand it via its 10 development plan. The 10 development plan defines those strategic features and it is thought that qualified people and strong society, production based innovation, high growth with sustainability, 
reliable places and sustainable environment to help development, providing international cooperation. Those mentioned features are so important for us to be able to understand Industry 4.0, including STEM education. Uh, I'm going to show you another uh, figure. Uh, you are able to see a figure which is created by me. Now we are uh, clearly uh, we clearly see that uh, in this model, system education and industry 4.0 forces to each other. We have some aims. I mean, uh, STEM education's aims in creativity, innovation, employability, and STEM education is related to 21st century skills. What are those mentioned skills? Critical thinking, teamwork, collaboration, complex communication skills, creativity, innovation, STEM literacy, efficient problem solving. As we can understand from this model, if we uh, get our stu students to donate with 21st century skills, we have to have a good quality STEM education. And it starts from preschool school education, so at the end of high school education, I can say that this. Uh, it came out from the model that STEM education should be enhanced to have high quality industry for a country, for every country I mean, because China says uh, industry for 5.0 is about to start, and this can be claimed especially for the Turkey and another European Union countries. Some 21st century skills and STEM education aims are very important to have high quality industrial system within industry 4.0. Another significant indicator is the link STEM education aims and 21st century skills. Within this context, they are necessary to be linked to STEM education, so STEM education can force industry 4.0 as well. Because this is so important, if you are not able to uh, achieve this uh, statement, uh, we cannot uh, achieve especially both STEM education and industry 4.0. It can be said that. The integration STEM education within NASI should be provided to have much more skilled people who are equipped with 21st century skills in 21st century. It can be given an example that is directly related to, to, to this uh, statement. So, uh, Kellings was states that industry certificate is necessary in a skill level position in a technological engineering field within those I mentioned about the examination, the exam, uh, this can be told. Gonzalez stated that in a study conducted by him, revealed in this study how the global economy motivated both federal and state governments with private industry to enhance the improvement of STEM academies. I have an important point with that. So, last at all, state that the manufacturing industry has been continued to be a central driver of growth for economists worldwide and in the industry 4.0 concept, it is still necessary for workers to make themselves ready for the new fields of modern smart manufacturing. It means we still need to create some new fields within industry 4.0. So Boyd and Tian reveals that capable of workers who have expertise in STEM education are deemed main for the research and development activities which stimulate economic growth. Because if you want to uh, achieve STEM education, if you achieve it, that aims, at the end of the process you will achieve uh, some economic growth. It is so normal as expected. Another study conducted by Hoyes uh, 2013 states in her study that partnerships with industry may be strong enough opportunities for students to investigate the fields of STEM disciplines and care both industry and education are key pieces in the STEM puzzle, especially. The Guardian, I want to give you an example conducted by uh, 10 grade students in Australia from a language grammar cycle and also they were given a place in the Guardian 
science uh, corner, Australian high school student, students made a drug to treat malaria disease. In the process, it was understood that they have collaboration in working, effective communication, critical thinking, innovative approach, and entrepreneurship. The process was taken uh, for two months. At the end of the process, the students created a new drug and uh, they created it as $2. It is another important within employability. So, it has been understood by the news that students could manage to produce by the medicine cheaper than other medicines because, as I know, the other medicines uh, are, are bought uh, for $8 in Australia, so which are already used by people. This means students and medicine can support employability for people in the future manufacturer because they created it by themselves. This is so important uh, from the point of STEM education. And an important uh, point is that the latest PISA in Focus explores this topic in greater detail, showing that allocating resources more equality across schools is an in this sensible and the first step if schools are to com compensate for inequalities in family background. Another uh, aim can be uh, can be taught within the context of STEM education is equity and social justice issues. If STEM education cannot achieve social justice issues and equity issues, we are not able to uh, say that yes, we have a uh, successful STEM education because this is not uh, expected. Because STEM education. Uh, and to reach all students. So, uh, although there are other measures, lesson makers and school leaders can take to promote equity, among others, ensuring access to valid educational resources and the capacity of school staff to make the best use of those resources, is one way for schools to help students. So, uh, these measures are imperative because PISA continuously shows that school systems already combine high performance and acuity demonstrate that it is possible to offer high quality education opportunities to all students. As I mentioned in previous slides, and please note that these statements, if you have any question at the end of the uh, webinar, you can write to me about these statements and I'm able to respond to your all questions as I can. So what can be said for the STEM jobs? Computer jobs is well known once again for top 7 positions for highest number of employees with applications and software also, engineers and computer support specialists. So, Topping the list jobs for computer systems, analyzed systems and software engineers, and computer and information systems and managers are also on the rise. Uh, this study conducted by United States uh, News in 2016. And also, so some STEM jobs that are so much demanded. Uh, the first is Petroleum engineering. I think most of you think that this uh, job cannot be located on the top of the list, but in a study conducted by uh, World Economic uh, Forum and also that report states that petroleum engineering is the located uh, on the top of the list, and then nuclear engineer, and then marine engineer, and then software engineer, and statics, architect and data mining, so augmented reality and then cyber security and big data analysis, industrial internet and cloud technology and uh, etc. So I think we can say something about augmented reality because we have too many tools within the scope of augmented reality 
So uh, some applications can be called, for example, Kahoot and Quizlet and and Prezi and and other topics. And also uh, in my previous slides, I can say something about. I think within uh, software, I not just mean uh, software engineering. It can be called. It can be said that about uh, some software are so useful for students by using technology which is integrated to science and mathematics uh, together. Uh, also, cloud technology. Uh, cloud technology is uh, a need. Any technology uh, which are backed up by European uh, Union, by some Erasmus Plus projects, and also Horizon 2020 projects, also uh, it can be called as digital citizenship, digital competence can be uh, given as an example. So, yeah, we know that we have some jobs within STEM education, and they, are, they can be uh, promoted. By including any other uh, jobs related to STEM education, but don't recognize some of the job titles because STEM positions are changing and evolving so rapidly. This is so important, so rapidly because some positions, such as computer network architects, lack any data beyond a few years ago. Other positions have been combined or redistributed over the years to better reflect the industry. So, uh, many thanks for your attention. Uh, it has taken uh, 25 minutes. If you have any questions, uh, any comments, I am here to respond to you. I think uh, Noah is going to start to speak. Uh, if any issues, if any subjects are not to be understood, I am able to say something more about those mentioned issues. Thank you, Sahin, for this presentation. We have I've collected some questions from some people who uh, left them on the chat. Before that, I just want to remind everyone, my colleague Noel, she has shared the survey for this webinar on the chat. Um, so everybody who wants to receive a certificate, please go into this survey and give us a feedback. Uh, don't worry if you write on the chat, because she will be copy pasting it many times, so you'll be able to access it. And now we're gonna have about 15 minutes for questions. So I have one, two, three, four different questions from uh, four different people. Uh, I'll, I'll start by the first one. Uh, Lydia Nazzaro, um, she said that the transition between stages, different stages of jobs uh, was very interesting. And she explained that in her opinion, it's important to bring together humanity teachers, um, as in social sciences and humanities teachers with STEM uh, teachers already in primary schools, um, and that it's important to promote critical thinking. Um, it's not really a question, it's more of a comment, but I don't know if you have anything uh, to comment on that. Yeah, I fully agree uh, to her. Uh, she's so right uh, because we have to uh, we have to include those mentioned social sciences to the STEM education, into STEM education especially. Uh, uh, but I'm not able to see any questions from the uh, list, unfortunately. No, don't worry. I'll I'll tell you the other ones. So okay, <laughs> the other one is from Isabella Kiss, and she says. First of all, she said that collaborative teaching and learning was really important. And she said that she was a former uh, uh, engineering teacher, I believe. And she wanted to know what do you think about textile engineering or clothing engineering, if that's going to be uh, an important industry, or, or what's your opinion about it? Uh, in my opinion, textile engineering is so important for the future of uh, engineering because uh, it combines to any different engineer engineering uh, ships to promote STEM education, uh, it's my opinion, but another another thing uh, I couldn't I couldn't hear, I'm sorry. Uh, no, she just also emphasized on that collaborative teaching and learning is important. And the, the, the question overall is, uh, it was about textile engineering and its importance. Yes. But um, we have another one from another question from Nuretim Aikan. And this one is mm -hmm. about um, Turkey. She's asking, uh, when did Jesus. STEM... Sorry? 
Nurettin Nurettin is a man. Not oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry about that. So he asked when did STEM mm -hmm. education started to be promoted in Turkey, and he said he th he believes it was between 1993 and but then it got cut off on 2005. So that's the question. Uh, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear. Can you repeat it again? He asked when did STEM education start in Turkey. Like which year, which period uh, of time? Okay, I see, I see. 2009, uh, he brought into Turkey by Professor Yüksek Çakmakçı as uh, famous academicians uh, who works at Hacettepe University and also we have a uh, STEM lab located in Hacettepe University. In 2009, after that, uh, some other researchers uh, brought it to the Turkey, but it started in 2009. Okay. Uh, the last question that I have here uh, from Vaisel Kaya. It's um, yeah. what do you do? You think that mobile applications will be useless uh, once artificial intelligence is developed? Yeah, uh, it can be. It can be useful and. Uh, those mentioned applications can be integrated to, uh, into it, especially. Uh, there are too many projects and provided and supported by the uh, European Union. Uh, we know that uh, I offer to him to uh, follow Horizon 2020 projects and also uh, iCloud projects. And he can understand more and more, I think. Okay, thank you. I have picked up on another question from Nikos Amanatidis. He asks, uh, what's your opinion on cyber physical systems? Uh, uh, and it's so important question and it is so difficult to respond to uh, this question in limited times, but uh, we have to donate our students, all students, to be aware of uh, using IT and also technological applications because we know uh, all we have mobile phones and laptops and we use internet uh, and we, uh, we spend our data by using those mentioned tools. So we have to know how we can use all of them because cyber security uh, is important for us to uh, to not face any problems with our bank account as you know uh, sometimes we have some problems with bank accounts uh, it can be said this okay i have uh, another question from gokham um his Question is, how can we use AR so AR in STEM education? Sorry, uh, I couldn't hear. The question uh, okay. from Gokham Arkam is, how can we use AR in STEM education? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There are forty uh, about forty different tools within uh, Armand Reology uh, we can use in our courses. For example, in Turkey, as uh, Yukon knows, uh, I think he knows, uh, we use technology in our classes. It is called a party project and also EVA. Uh, it, is, it can be integrated augmented reality tools by using um, laptops and mobile phones, by using some those mentioned different tools uh, for example, Prezi and Tarot and, and Quizlet and other and OpenSlash, for example, that it can be enhanced uh, more and more tools, as I remember those. Yes, it can be, it can be done. Yes. Yeah, they, they, now that you're mentioning the tools, there was a question if you if you could uh, uh, tell a little bit more about some augmented reality uh, useful tools. Anything in specific that you want to share a specific tool, for instance? Yeah, yeah. Uh, augmented reality. 
Um, okay. Uh, it can be said that uh, you are uh, you are located you are located next to a station, in the bus station. Now uh, you are uh, looking at the uh, sky. Then an airplane comes to you directly. But this is not true. This is uh, there is an there is an abbreviation located on the on the window. Uh, this can be an example of that within augmented reality, for example. Okay, thank you for the example. Um, I wanna I picked up on another question that it's on a completely different topic. Ezra Ogur yes. asks how language teachers can be involved in STEM education. This is quite a general question, but if you want to give uh, any opinion about that, that would be nice. Uh, it is a nice question. Thanks for a lot. Uh, I think uh, it can be included within language, uh, within communication skills and creativity. Uh, the communication skills are so important within STEM education that can be uh, that can be used some applications to promote STEM education within language. Uh, maybe this can be done, but. Uh, Anything uh, can be done, but no, I can just say this one. And communication skills and creativity. Because there are some tools used in uh, language, language teaching, as I know. Uh, if she wants to take them, uh, I can email to her after the webinar. Okay, thanks for your answer. Um... Emel uh, is asking another question and he says, which are the best countries for STEM education? It's again uh, pretty general, but since you showed some uh, some uh, statistics, maybe uh, from any international uh, measurements or something? Uh, uh, actually, there isn't any measurements uh, within, to define this uh, truth, but I can say that uh, European Sukhumet is the, uh, one of the leading STEM education institution for me, but uh, if we talk about country, uh, United States is, uh, can be uh, called on the top of the list, and then Germany, and then Germany, and England, and maybe, and maybe, and, and then and maybe, and Japan, and those mentioned countries. But uh, those mentioned countries are not def uh, definitely can be said within the uh, ranking. Okay, um, I see some more contacts, uh, comments, sorry. Um, in general, I think people are very interested in having examples of tools and of applications, I guess, that they can use in the classroom. Because mm -hmm. I've been seeing a lot of comments about the, the tools, something that they can use, some apps. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, mm -hmm. since uh, most of uh, our attendees here are teachers, they want to they want to know whether uh, how can they use this in the classroom, I assume. Uh, I'm going to wait a little bit more to see if there's any other question. There's a question from uh, Gokhan Arkan. Um, he asks, how do you teach STEM subjects uh, in university lessons? I guess they want to know the difference between maybe secondary and tertiary universe, uh, education. Uh, sorry, I, I couldn't hear the question. I'm sorry. Uh, no, can you repeat the question again? Sorry, um, it was about uh, teaching uh, STEM in university lessons. Yes, uh, if you want your students to get them donated with STEM education, you have to start from preschool education uh, till uh, at the end of high school. If you cannot achieve this, it is not so useful for university education, getting STEM education, because STEM education is similar. STEM education starts at a uh, preschool uh, level to uh, at the end of high school. If you cannot achieve this, uh, yes, uh, you can have 
so big laboratories, STEM laboratories, uh, any uh, tools, any missions, but you have to do those all mentioned things with your city students. If you cannot uh, get donate them, it is not useful for universities within STEM education. Thank you, Sahin. Uh, I have lost the chat for a second. Um, let's see if I can get it back. Yes, I see it now. Uh, there's another question from Carmen Diaz, and she says, uh, the term STEM is not yet in place. Is there any data on the positioning of the term STEM in the industry 4.0? Uh, Carmen is right actually, uh, still we haven't a uh, definition term uh, with STEM education related and integrated uh, in Industry 4.0, but uh, some points uh, within uh, engineering and its issues can be included to the term, and also uh, business growth, some uh, topics can be included to the uh, Industry 4.0. But example of this, it is not, uh, it hasn't been uh, provided yet. Okay, thank you for this uh, answer. Uh, I then, see some people yeah, typing. I, we haven't any uh, study, unfortunately. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Carmen is responding. She says that if the term STEM is little known, the impact of STEM reality on society penetrates with difficulty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and, China uh, claims that, yeah, it's, yeah, uh, no, no, go it, on, go uh, on. China claims, yeah, yeah, China uh, claims that uh, it has uh, revealed a new term as industry 5.0, which has uh, social sciences, humanities, as Herman defines. And any related issues and any other participants ask maybe this one, but exactly of this we haven't in our studies within this uh, question, unfortunately. We haven't any new data. Yes, uh, there is also another question from Silvana on another topic. She asks, what about STEAM? Maybe you want to comment about uh, this approach? The difference from yeah, STEM? Yeah, uh, we included yeah we include arts uh, in STEM education. Uh, we have uh, STEAM because uh, we say STEAM by including aesthetic. Actually, STEM education has an aesthetic approach. So uh, some researchers state is that yes, STEM education plus art. Maybe some of you uh, some of you solve. Uh, a building located in Prague and Czech Republic. It is called as dancing house. When we look dancing house, we can say that something about it uh, within STEM education and the plus art and also aesthetic actually. Within this uh, scope, it can be uh, included uh, aesthetic and also art. I, uh, I want to say something about uh, this question related to this question. I uh, found I have found uh, an international journal. It is called Journal of STEAM Education. If any of you are interested in STEAM education or STEM education, you are able to send your articles, your studies to our journal. We will be so happy to uh, publish your studies related to STEAM education and STEM education. Thank you, Sahin. Uh, there is another uh, question from Mahesh. Um, if a person, the, the question is, if a person can work mm -hmm. with STEM and follow their their culture, if they're not mm -hmm. from Europe. Sorry, sorry. 
if a, the, the question is if someone can work in STEM and follow this STEM culture, this uh, STEM approach, if they're not from Europe, I guess uh, if this STEM approach is not developed in other co countries, how easy it is to um, implement it, perhaps? Mm -hmm. uh, I uh, offer to manage to follow uh, university websites and some institutions' websites because there are too many tools and applications you can uh, we are able to see by looking at their websites. Uh, I can just say this one. Yeah, maybe uh, Marish can go to the uh, industries or companies uh, to see what they do within STEM education. But except of this, okay. uh, I cannot offer anything about it. Yeah. Oh, there's another question from Nurettin Aikan. If you could expand uh, or talk a little bit more about bio cyber technology. Sorry, I can't hear you. The, there is another question from Nurettin Aikan asking to expand, mm -hmm. uh, talk a little bit about bio cyber technology uh, I can say that uh, bio uh, cyber technology maybe is an important field but uh, it is it cost too too much at current time but besides that having bio protection have its uh, flow to uh, so uh, 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 it, it, it can affect also can only be measured once it's uh, tangible, maybe uh, and also just this I can I'm not I haven't any uh, more idea about this. Maybe uh, again theory has enormous um, potential as a tool in cyber security making it possible to investigate and various scenarios and endlessly maybe. Uh, an information perspective is investigating in this issue. Uh, can we set this for this question? But thanks a lot yes. for the uh, question. There is a question from Erkan Mert. Um, says, I already remember you also talk about Industry Revolution 5.0 that is taking, mm -hmm. that is talking from China. Can you give us some mm -hmm. examples about ER 5.0? Mm -hmm. China claims that yes, we have industry 4.0 within smart technology, smart industry. So machines uh, communicate with to each other by using codes and some uh, applications, and they include besides them social sciences, uh, human, uh, some. Uh, some uh, how, I, how I can say it about uh, human based, human based, uh, human based sense, maybe because the the human manage everything, not uh, just uh, machines. China claims this, but it is still uh, there are too many uh, discussions about China's claims. It is not definite. Because we we have known that industry 4.0 about uh, a couple years, but Sony and China, China just climbs now. Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. I have collected uh, two more questions. I'm not sure we will have uh, much more time for more, but we will ask for sure these two. The first one is from Suleiman Seren. Uh, he's asking, are you going to make a presentation about the application of STEM education in lessons in the near future? Yes, yes it, can be, it can be done if scientists and STEM Alliance or European Schoolnet is uh, and wants me to create a new webinar within those mentioned uh, tools and obligations, I am able to do it for the future. Sure, we will, we will look into this. Yes. 
there is another question from Se Sehai. Uh, do you think that robots will take the place of teachers in the future? Uh, a difficult question to respond this question, really, because <laughs> uh, there are too many criticism uh, within these issues. In my opinion, it is not human managed robots, but in some opinions uh, from other people, they say that and they believe that yes, robots and machines can have the control. But still, there are so different discussions about this. It is not so different, definite to respond to this question. I, I offer to him to read regarding size corners, please. There are too many uh, articles about this issue. Okay, uh, thank you, Sahin, for answering all of our questions today. I think for the time being, we won't be able to ask uh, any more because the time is going to be up. Reminder for everyone yeah. that you can find the recording of this webinar and all of the Scientix webinars in the Scientix website. You have the link here on the chat. Noel has just posted it. Um, so that will be all for today. Thank you, everybody, for attending the session. And of course, a special thanks to Sahin for this presentation. And that's all for today. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Sahin. And see you next time. OK, uh, uh, for last question, uh, last talking, uh, can I have one minute? Or? Sure, uh, you can have one more minute. <laughs> OK, uh, oh, merci. Merci, uh, uh, I want to thank you all participants from Scientix, ambassadors on candidates of Scientix, and, and other my colleagues from Turkey, from European country, uh, European Union country. And also, I want to send a special uh, greetings uh, to my colleague from Kojeri. Uh, she's also a science teacher, uh, also here. Uh, thanks. Thank you so much also to you. Noel, uh, we have been uh, Working together since one month for the preparing this webinar. Uh, really, really, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, Sahin, and uh, goodbye to everyone. Okay, goodbye.